Hey there friends and welcome to another episode in the Geology 101 Physical Geology video series. I'm Geology Professor Sean Wilsey. Today in episode 25 we're going to piggyback off what we learned about in episode 24 learning about strike and dip. And we're actually going to measure strike and dip so you can see what that looks like as geologists go out in the field and measure strike and dip. As always this series is based on my Geology 101 class uh, although this is spilling over a little bit into what I cover in Geology 102 but nonetheless it's the same curriculum the same bit of information and so there's several different types of um, instruments that we use for measuring strike and dip but the most classic the tried and true one is the brunt and compass i'll also show you a little bit here how there's a couple of apps you might get with your phone that will measure strike and dip as well but we'll start with the brunt and compass and i realized that before i take you down the hall and show you this that it was going to be a little bit challenging for me to videotape measuring the strike and dip with the Brunton compass and also holding the thing. And so I thought what we do first is actually go over the parts of a Brunton compass, make sure you know um, where to get the information you need for strike and dip off the compass. And then we'll go down the hall here in a second, measure strike and dip in my classroom. And then I'll also tack on a video at the end of this where I'm out in the field measuring strike and dip. It's a little more challenging sometimes out there because we have to figure out what the orientation of bedding or whatever planar or planar fabric we're interested in what that orientation is when we're outside so when you look at a brunton compass this is my tried and true one i've had since gosh when did i get this thing 1996 i think um so i've had this for quite a while so this is just a view of the brunton compass from one side um and then the other we'll get to this little lever right here this turns out to be important because this actually uh, works the little level. The, this is the clinometer. So this will, is what you'll use to measure the dip uh, angle of the planar fabric or planar feature that you're interested in. So that's what the Brunton compass looks like from each side. When you open the Brunton compass up, it looks like this. Nice new ones don't have a broken mirror, but again, mine's uh, quite a bit old and so it's it's shown some good use here but it's still intact and works just fine so there's a siding mirror um, there's a little siding window we're not going to go through all the parts of the compass here we're just going to look at the main parts we use for measuring strike and dip these compasses actually perform several other functions as well they're actually called transit compasses but because the company that is by far the most popular is called brunton it's colloquially just called a brunt and compass so we see we have a siding arm here this is going to be important because this is going to point in our strike direction and then the main portion of the compass here in the center uh, i'll zoom in on this here in a second in the next slide to show you what this looks like you can see there's two carpenters levels in there with bubbles in them there's a, a needle here uh, which is the compass and then there's lots of numbers so there's a lot going on here so let's start with strike when we're measuring strike we're going to hold that compass horizontally because we want to see what direction the inclined plane the bedding or whatever feature we're interested in what direction it it goes or trends with respect to a horizontal plane so when we're determining strike um, we're going to mainly focus on this little circular bubble here and so let me orient you here to a couple of things notice around the outer rim of the compass we have numbers going from zero kind of down here at the bottom and i guess in this case it goes to the right all the way around to 360. so remember in the last episode we talked a little bit about azimuth direction and so the white arrow here is going to be important that's going to tell us our strike direction uh, we'll get to some of these other things here but let's start here again measuring strike the first thing we're going to want to do is hold the edge one of these sides of the compass against the inclined plane of interest and get this bubble right inside that circle there and that lets us know that the compass is perfectly horizontal once we know the compass is flush against one of these edges is up against the inclined plane that we're measuring and that the horizontal bubble is in the middle there then we can use this arm here we're going to look at the white arrow to tell us what the strike direction is so notice in this case the white arrow is pointing to about 165 so that's our azimuth direction that's the direction of strike remember that north is zero 90 is east 
180 is south, 270 is west. So this would be a southeast uh, quadrant, a southeast strike, but more specifically, it's about 165. Um, notice if you take the arrow over here, there's another arrow at the opposite end that's black in color, and it just basically shows you 180 degrees from that white arrow. So in this case, it's 345. Both of those would be perfectly acceptable strike directions, although I'll show you a way in which we, we have a preferred strike direction using something called right hand rule. So again, for strike, all we need to do is hold the compass up against the slab, look at the, make sure the bubble is in the middle, and then read off whatever number, whatever azimuth that white arrow is pointing to. And I'll show you that here in a second. For dip, what we want to do is turn the compass on its side. So basically have this, this, you can see where my thumb is, or that's my pinky, where my pinky is here, have that edge of the compass on the slab of rock, on the plane of interest. And this will be pointing down the dip direction. You can see the black part of the arm down here. So that arm will be pointing down the dip direction. And now what we do is we reach around the back of the compass and that little lever that operates the clinometer, that will move this little um, bubble and level here. And so now as we move that clinometer lever back and forth, we wanna get this bubble centered in there. And mine's not perfectly centered, but it's pretty close. I was trying to take a picture at the same time. And once that bubble's pretty well in between those black marks there, then what we wanna do is drop down to this area here. So again, this is our clinometer level for measuring the dip angle. And then we wanna drop down to this part here. Notice there's two 60s, and then right between the two 60s is a long line. And we wanna take that long line and project it down to this set of numbers here, going from zero to 90. And wherever that long line on those two 60s intersects these numbers here, that's what we wanna read off as the dip angle. So notice here, if you take that long line, looks like it's about a 28 degree number a 28 degree dip so the compass is tilted or inclined about 28 degrees and notice it goes 0 to 90 on this side it goes 0 to 90 over here these numbers here are for i think that's percent grade more of an engineering um, uh, measurement than something we use in geology we use degrees down from the horizontal so this is how we determine dip so hopefully this is helpful as we go down now to the lab and measure strike and dip on a slab in the lab looking at the compass and then I'll take you out into the field with another segment of the video. Okay, so what I have here just set up in the classroom is just a slab of rock, a planar slab of rock like you might see in the field, uh, inclined at an angle. And so we're gonna use our Brunton compass and measure the strike and dip of this. So the idea again here is that we lay the Brunton compass, let's see if I can do all this with the camera, so that the edge is sitting on the planar rock body. And then what we're gonna do, it might be a little tricky here with the glare, let's see, uh, is we're gonna look into that little carpenter level, that bubble right there, and work on getting that in the circle. So right there, Hopefully you can see, sorry, that's a little fuzzy, but it's in the circle and then we read the arrow here. So it's about 35 degrees. So it's, str it's striking 035, that's the azimuth of strike. Okay, so that's how we figure out the strike direction. Again, just kind of give you a visual there as I hold that edge and hold that compass horizontal on the rock slab. Now for dip, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna turn the compass on its side and with the arm here pointing down the dip direction, we're going to now use the little clinometer lever on the back side. So my middle finger's back there moving that back and forth. And now what we can do is get that second little bubble in between the lines there. And then we drop down, remember look between the 60s there to see what the dip angle is. And it looks like it's right about 30, maybe 31 degrees. So again, putting that bubble in there and then getting that there. So we have a strike of, uh, what was it, 035? 
So that's a northeast strike. And our dip direction here is to, so if the strike direction is going away from us, because we measured strike this way, right? There we go. We measured strike this way. So one thing we can do here is use right hand rule. If you put your right hand on the slab, on the rock body of interest, your thumb, if, you're, if your hand and fingers are pointing down the dip direction, your thumb should be pointing in the preferred strike direction. So strike is this direction and also this direction, but in this case, we're gonna choose that strike direction. And the nice thing about right hand rule is if we choose that as our strike direction, we know that the dip direction is just 90 degrees um, off from that, 90 degrees more than that. So again, the strike, because I already forgot it, is, yeah, about, um, oops, sorry, not good camera work here, about 035, so about 040 actually now, 040, so that's a northeast strike, and then the dip would be to the southeast. Okay, we had about 30 degrees for our strike. So strike and dip. That's just a fun little um, demonstration here in the lab. Okay, so I forgot to show you that you can also use apps on your phone to measure strike and dip. Now I don't, I'm just used to the Brunt and Compass and I've measured literally thousands of rock faces. So don't often use the phone. Uh, I stick to the Brunt and Compass because it's kind of what I know. But this one here is called Geo Compass and I've used it a little bit. And so the idea with this here is it's listing the, let me see if I can get all in there. The top left number is the strike using uh, quadrants. The, the right, upper right number is using azimuth, which is the one I prefer. Uh, and then the bottom left number here is the dip angle and the direction of dip. So the idea here is you can place the phone right on the rock slab uh, with the bottom of your phone pointing down in the dip direction, like so. And then you can go in and just read right off the screen there. So the dip, uh, the azimuth of strike is about 36. That's pretty close. We had about 40, I believe, with the Brunt and Compass, so it's within a few degrees. And then the dip angle uh, according to the phone, is about 33 degrees to the southeast. And we had, I think, about 30, 31 degrees to the southeast. So again, it, it's quite close, quite similar. The other number down here is the dip direction using the azimuth of the dip direction. It should be um, 90 degrees from, notice it's 90 degrees from the azimuth of the strike direction, which is right above it. So dip and dip direction using azimuth on the right side, um, or excuse me, uh, strike and dip direction on the right side, and then on the left side, strike using quadrant, and then the dip angle with the dip direction shown on the bottom left there. So GeoCompass is the app that I'm showing here. Uh, hopefully, well, it's hard to, hard to film this. Hopefully that's somewhat helpful to you. Um, but again, I just use the Brunton Compass. So now we'll go ahead and take you out into the field and show you how this works outside. Okay, so here we are out in the field looking for a place to measure strike and dip, uh, learning how to quantify the bedding orientation or other orientation of planar fabrics we see in rock. So the first thing that's tricky outside is you have to figure out with all these faces and cuts and lines in the rock, you have to figure out which one represents bedding. So for example, I can see there's a nice flat cut right here next to this prickly pear. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm measuring the correct face on, on the rock. And so in this case, we're looking at some sedimentary rocks. And so our interest would be in bedding because we want to see how these rocks are oriented and you know, how much they're tilted and in what direction. And uh, this particular outcrop turns out to be not too difficult. They, it can be a lot trickier. Um, in this case, we've got some very nice lines running through it. And as long as we feel good about these being consistent across this area um, and looking a lot like what we would expect from bedding, then that looks like the orientation, that planar orientation there would look like that's the, the thing we're interested in. Uh, again, notice it can get a little tricky. There's another little face down here, but in this case, you can see the lines that's the bedding. 
So the bedding there is tilted uh, down to the right and that matches pretty nicely with what we saw just over here. The beds here are dipping away from us or away from our view here. And so let's then this once you've pretty much established which direction bedding is and in a place like this where you've got rocks that aren't necessarily or perfectly attached to the earth you want to make sure that these are truly outcrops and not rotated blocks for example here this was the outcrop we looked at before there's bedding there there's the lines right if i move over to this rock notice they're going in a totally different direction these are going in this direction as opposed to these so you've got to really be careful about which um, rock surface you use uh, you don't want to be hasty too and just like be like oh there's there's a rock i can see bedding in that that rock that'll just do you want to kind of survey the area and make sure that a you can tell what the bedding in this region is doing and then two you're selecting a outcrop or a small little face that shows that pretty nicely right here we've got um this is nice and consistent because we've got this surface here going back to that one we've got a much bigger expanse of rock so this looks more than just like a boulder that tumbled down the hill this looks like this is attached to the earth and now i'm seeing if i get down here a little bit um this nice surface right here a nice smooth surface that represents bedding that is the one i'm interested in and the one i want to measure so i'll get my front and compass out to measure bedding pop it open and so i'm going to use right hand rule so here's the uh surface the bedding surface this would be the strike direction running back and forth across the rock this way this would be the dip direction in this case um maybe i'll start with dip direction or dip first so i'll measure the dip so when i do that remember i want to set up my compass so that it's perpendicular and this little lever arm here is pointing in the true dip direction then what i'm doing is let me adjust the camera just a little bit here there we go now what i'm doing is um, leveling the little bubble so i'm making sure that that's on the face representing dip and now i'm rotating that until that little carpenter's level in there is that bubble is more or less level then i can pull it off and in this case looks like our bedding sorry to do this with the camera looks like our our dip was about 40 41 degrees so it's dipping uh to the east in some direction some direction of east about 41 degrees so now we'll go for the strike direction we we'll use right hand rule so remember the idea here is we put our right hand on the slab on the bedding plane with our fingers pointing down in the dip direction and our thumb pointing in the preferred strike direction so to keep this in right hand rule this direction here the direction my thumb is pointing that's going to be the strike direction so that's the direction i want to point the lever arm of my brunt and compass now we're looking to get the compass level so now we're shooting for this little circular bubble it's a little hard to do this with a camera and that okay so there are the bubbles pretty well level and notice the white arm over here of the compass is pointing towards about 335 so that's to the northwest so the strike in this case which is this direction is 335 that's northwest the dip direction which is this way would be to the northeast and it would be about a 40 41 degree angle so there's our strike and dip 335 that's our azimuth direction with a 40 degree northeast dip so that's kind of how it works outside in the field obviously when you're doing field geology or measuring um, dozens sometimes hundreds of these bedding orientations across a region uh, to try to see how things change with faulting and folding and other sorts of structures. So hopefully that was helpful.